Okay, good morning. Um, uh, coming off our off week, uh, uh, used our off week for um, opportunity to uh, recharge and uh, refocus, um, get an opportunity to look at ourselves uh, from a um, tendency standpoint, get a chance to look at other people uh, as well, and uh, work on a lot of the basics, the things that um, have we've been punished for this season um, in regards to um, not being successful and uh, finding ways where we can improve our football team even uh, with just two weeks in the regular season uh, left. You Believe it or not, you can get a lot done in a day. And uh, both in the film room, certainly uh, out on the practice field, but also at the same time knowing a lot of uh, tread and ripped off the tires. Uh, and we have several uh, young players that are contributing in uh, big roles and a lot of times with young players. Uh, you know, uh, the challenge of a season is just the, the length of it and uh, all that that entails. But uh, just recapping the game, a game that I felt the teams were incredibly evenly matched and it, it worked out that way at the end of the day. And then we had 4.1 yards per play and I think they were around 3.8 yards a play. And, uh, you know, there's such a, a razor thin a margin in the SEC uh, for both winning and losing. and. Uh, you know, when you don't have a clean performance in regards to taking care of the football, uh, you're going to struggle to win. And uh, certainly that was uh, the, the case. You know, our ineffectiveness, you know, on offense uh, in terms of uh, turnovers and our inability to, to sustain and finish drives uh, were, you know, a big factor and have been a big factor in our, in our certainly in our five losses. And then defensively, uh, not being able to get off the field on third and 16 in a two minute drill. Uh, we got to, we got to win that, that moment every single time. And, uh, and they had a dominant performance all night. And, you know, I know it's easy to pick on them uh, when we, we give up a few plays uh, where they, they execute uh, in a critical time and we don't. Uh, but just not being able to do enough things uh, you know, to win the football game. And uh, we certainly had plenty of chances to do so. And uh, we, need to, you know, we, we need to do a better job as a, as a football team, and, and, and particularly on offense, being able to put pressure on people uh, you know, by uh, sustaining drives. You get into past, the, past midfield, you got to score. Uh, you get down in the red zone, you, gotta, you can't kick more field goals uh, uh, than touchdowns. And uh, we got to find a way to create some explosive plays these last couple of weeks. If you you don't, it, it, the the, pre, the 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 inability to create explosives just doesn't just go away. That puts pressure everywhere else on your on your football team. And that's you know we've struggled uh, offensively uh, from an execution and a consistency and certainly taking care of the ball uh, most importantly. And the smallest details always have the. Uh, the biggest and largest uh, consequences. And um, uh, when we've taken care of the football, we, we've won you know five games and we've outscored people 63 to six. And when we've lost our five games, we've been outscored 58 uh, to seven in the turnover margin. So recipe for, uh, for, for both winning and losing, just take care of the ball and uh, continue to improve. Um, and when uh, you take care of the ball again, you know, good things will usually happen. So um, our last three games, you know, just looking at some self scout things, our last three games, uh, you know, again, we, we've lost two of them, uh, but uh, we have run the ball better, um, just under seven yards a clip uh, in our last three games, uh, excluding sacks. And uh, so we're doing some things, that, uh, and even from our Missouri game, there are several guys up front that, that had a winning performance. I thought uh, guys that uh, played well, we ran the ball, uh, you know, efficiently. Uh, Xavier Robinson, Taylor Tatum had his uh, opportunities there in the first half. Jackson ran the ball uh, with good toughness. Um, uh, several guys on defense had outstanding games. Uh, I'd be negligent if I didn't recognize that. Uh, Danny Stutzman had, uh, again, a career high 19 tackles. Billy Bowman had his another outstanding game, uh, you know, as a senior and uh, scored his fourth career uh, defensive touchdown. Uh, both of them uh, this last week were invited to the Senior Bowl. Uh, so they just don't drop those invites out of the sky. Uh, nobody drives down I-35 and throws a 
Senior Bowl uh, offers out the window like a paper route. So really cool for those guys to be uh, recognized through a lot of hard work and, and sacrifice uh, throughout their careers. And um, great to have uh, Farouk and uh, Burks back. Would love to have created some uh, more explosive plays for them. Uh, and uh, But I, I thought our guys, uh, you know, those two in particular, um, did some good things. And then Zach Schmidt was 3-3 three three, uh, again and uh, been perfect on the year on his extra point. 7-7 seven seven on his field goals on the year. Luke Elzinga only punted three times. Also had a nice touch, uh, 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 throw and catch to, to Bauer uh, there on the fake. And then, again, I've got – if you all had all day, i got lots of guys to brag on on defense and uh, the, the things that they've been able to do, not only – in our, our last game, but uh, on the year. Um, we've improved. We were uh, made tremendous improvement from year one to year two, and year two to year three, we've made uh, another, you know, tremendous jump, you know, uh, in on defense. We've defended the most possessions in college football, and uh, our guys have responded. A year ago, we, we played pretty well that way in points per possession. We gave up 30, or we were ranked 30th in the country a year ago, and we're top 15 uh, this year, um, pass defense. Uh, I said this on my, my radio show last night. We've, uh, it's not anywhere close to where we want to be. We want to be the best in the country, and uh, we're not there yet. But we shaved off 40 yards through this part of the season. I only recap that because that's we looked at ourselves, and uh, what's the what's the data telling us? And we've we've improved that way. We uh, jumped 50 50 spots on pass defense from where we were uh, a year ago. We've total defense we jumped uh, 55 spots uh, as well yards uh, per play we went from 5.4 to 4.8 so uh, jumped 38 spots there and we needed to create more pressure on people um, and again we've had a, a, an incredibly challenging schedule uh, maybe one of the best and in, in, uh, most challenging in Oklahoma history and uh, but we got better in in about every area on defense. But a year ago we were 88th in the country in sacks per game. We're currently at 10 and uh, averaging 3.2. And and the rush defense we're sixth in the country, uh, giving up uh, just under three yards a, a carry uh, rush defense. And overall per game uh, we jumped 28 spots, uh, averaging. Uh, uh, 109 a game on defense um, and then a big plays which was a, a, a huge area of inconsistency uh, a year ago on defense and uh, we jumped um, 67 spots uh, in that in that category against some really quality explosive offenses uh, we're 16th in the country uh, there not quite as good as we were a year ago on third down going into the Missouri game we were uh, uh, top 20 in the country, and uh, we let them have a little too much success there in the second half of that Missouri game uh, that uh, kind of skewed those numbers. But I've been really good in the red zone uh, as well, jumped 20 spots in the red zone. So we know we've been historically uh, uh, inefficient and ineffective on, on offense, so I won't even talk about that, but we have gotten a little bit better. Some players have gotten better the last several weeks, and. Uh, we've been a little more efficient and given ourselves a chance if we just take care of the ball, uh, you know, we'd have a chance to win uh, every game uh, that we play and along with creating some explosive plays. Uh, you can't with, the, again, the, the types of teams that we're playing, you have to be able to do that uh, to put yourself in a position uh, to win. So I know that was long winded. Uh, I had a lot to, uh, you know, uh, unwrap with you. But uh, with that, I'll, I'll open it up. Brent, there's uh, still a lot to play for this season. You've got two important games remaining, but I wanted to ask you about the offensive coordinator surge. What is your timeline for hiring an offensive coordinator, especially with signing day two weeks away with the transfer portal window opening up? How immediate do you have to hire an offensive coordinator? Where, where are you at right now in that search? Yeah, we've, uh, you know, I've talked to several people, and uh, so we're feel like we're in a good position where we need to be and uh, uh, haven't put a hard deadline on it, uh, making that decision and uh, doing the, the process that's due diligence. And uh, there's a lot of layers to it, as you can imagine. And I'm very sensitive uh, to uh, you know what we're trying to do uh, here to finish out the year, uh, give ourselves a chance to win our, our last two regular season games and uh, continue to get better. 
and uh, and then you know I gotta you know there's got to be a sense of urgency uh, and there certainly is uh, finding um, you know the uh, the best uh, solution uh, to where we're at right now and so uh, but there is a, a real thing uh, called a regular season that's got to finish up and and if uh, I'm talking to the right people which I believe uh, I am uh, you know then they're they're going to be sensitive to you know finishing what they started and being loyal uh, to their players and the people that they work alongside with uh, things of that nature but uh, sooner rather than later is when I want it finished, uh, but I want to get it right. And uh, so that's our, our focus. Thanks, mm -hmm. Brian Aver. Yeah, Brent, we talked to uh, Xavier last night, and he talked about the process of, uh, you know, I know a couple weeks ago you told us that the plan was to redshirt him. Mm -hmm. He said that uh, you all had talked to him about <coughs> playing these last couple games and that he had taken some time to think about that. What was that process like uh, going through with him and, how tough is it, I guess, to balance that, uh, you know, the, the present need versus the potential for the future? Yeah, it's always, you always try to be sensitive uh, to that, you know. A guy like Xavier, you know, he loves the University of Oklahoma. All of his best football is ahead of him. Um, being a freshman coming in at a position where we had a lot of uh, depth, um, didn't give him as many opportunities uh, early on and he'd be the first to tell you too there's always a transition things weren't necessarily smooth for him during the course of the spring not not that that's uh abnormal that's more normal than not and uh but uh you know a few weeks ago we were a little healthier there at that position and his opportunities came because of you know uh, we weren't able to travel uh, right on time, uh, right, right here this season, uh, right on time. We uh, both Barnes and Sawchuck were both unavailable, and so didn't make the trip. And so we got his opportunity. Uh, we know that Taylor Tatum is a fantastic uh, prospect, and he got in the game, did some really good things, and then he struggled a little bit. And then Sam Franklin got in the game, and uh, he struggled a little bit. And so Xavier got his opportunity and did a great job, what great change up. He got in the game and just was outstanding. Uh, showed his instincts and his physicality, uh, some things that he showed maybe in the main game, uh, you know, late in that game, what a big, strong, physical, uh, instinctive, explosive guy like him can do uh, as a change up late in the game as well. Uh, but fantastic athlete, uh, good for him to be ready for his opportunity. Uh, he earned a lot of trust through that uh, experience, and we've, and the off. A week we went back and just looked at it and uh, there's a better chance than not that you know he'll play and be more of a part you know you look at um, we got to find a way to win and uh, if, if him playing him is, these last uh, two games gives us a better chance in whatever role that is uh, then we've got to be you know loyal to the team and he's all on board for that. Brent, I wanted to ask a little bit more about something Eric mentioned with the calendar of signing day and the portal opening. Obviously, this is a new setup than what it has been in the past. It, it sounds like it's impacting your offensive coaching search, but is it impacting other things? What have you seen just in terms of how some of these things moving around are, are potentially changing things? Well, again, the real carnage is, you know, getting our roster to 105. And so what does that mean? That means you're going to have to tell several players that they don't have a spot. So that's that's really the, the, the only um, thing that has caused me uh, – just anxiousness it's it's just it's just not good and uh but i'm not sitting here complaining my job is to is to make you know the best decisions for our program and and try to help uh people through uh this carnage and the collateral damage is real uh, these are uh, human beings that uh, have dreams and uh you know are valued uh, parts uh members of our team and our locker room and uh and we're gonna have to you know, make some really uh, difficult, challenging decisions. And uh, and even, again, even on the, you know, scholarship guys, you know. I've been telling guys for uh, over 12 months, <laughs> uh, everything's getting ready to change. And uh, there, there will be more of a business-type approach that uh, we will operate under, uh, all the while not losing or compromising uh, our belief system, things that we value, uh, what we know the real uh, 
benefit for these young guys through their collegiate experience, the development from uh, boyhood to manhood, but when running a football team, you know, uh, that has incredibly high standards and, and expectations and uh, the most challenging, uh, you know, league on the planet. And, and so, uh, you know, their job is to show up every day and show uh, that they can have uh, value to this team. And uh, they're still a developmental piece that's real. Um, just like all those young guys that are gaining this amazing experience this year on offense, all those young guys, um, you know, proud of their uh, where they're at right now. Uh, you know, not satisfied with where they're at right now, but know that, man, they've, they've busted their butt. They've made some improvement. They're going to develop. And so you don't just give in to, to, to that piece of your program. And so... You know, with uh, with a transfer portal, you're finding ways to improve your football team where you really uh, have the real needs. Uh, and then uh, can you find guys that can bring value? And so those are the things that have been ongoing for the last several months and uh, and then ongoing through our season uh, as well. Guys, uh, again, I say this a lot, best ability is availability. And so if guys are just seem to, they just can't stay healthy, uh, what happens when they go to the NFL? Uh, they don't last long. And uh, so, you know, we will take that into account. And uh, all of those things that go along with, uh, you know, there's going to be, you know, salaries and uh, value system and and uh, and trying to find, you know, a way to improve our football team and uh, recognize where we're at and where, again, that we got to get better immediately. And, uh, and also recognize where we have made incremental improvement and through another uh, off season, uh, another year of development, another year of maturity, uh, will they be a better version of themselves? And uh, so those are a lot of those things. There are some deadlines uh, that are attached to some of that. And uh, but you know the one that you know makes me most anxious is certainly I've got to uh, make sure that we have great clarity and we can move forward uh, in regards to our staff. And uh, I feel great about uh, where that is. Uh, very attractive opportunity uh, for you know uh, anybody in the coaching profession. And then uh, making sure that we uh, we're sitting where we need to in regards to our signing day uh, with the uh, high school players uh, that we have committed. And then uh, and then the, you know addressing the needs that we have. And then having you know lots of conversations here over the next uh, uh, several weeks when it comes to. Um, you know, making decisions on our current roster. Quick follow-up. The conversations with guys that might not have a spot, mm -hmm. do you have a day that you feel like I need to tell these guys by a certain day so they can make plans? Or what's sort of your, your best guess on that? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't, I don't have uh, uh, that date. It'll happen before the uh, you know, sooner rather than later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, so we uh, Along with the veterans like Danny and Billy and Ethan, uh, you got Jackson as a captain for this game. Is that a sign of, of uh, the next two games that he's your guy going forward in these next two games, but also for next season and his desire to be back next season? Well, it's a, it's a sign of, and I don't know what the future holds. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we love Jackson and uh, we believe in him. Uh, but it's a sign of he's one of our best leaders that we have on the team. And, uh, you know, there's plenty of guys going through uh, rough spots that still have the ability to lead and uh, fight and compete. And uh, and uh, so that goes along with, you know, that position uh, as well. Uh, and uh, But representing, you know, the offensive side of the ball, uh, those are two of our, our best leaders in uh, Troy Everett and, uh, and Jackson Arnold. Yeah, Brent, um, with signing day coming up in, in a couple weeks, I'm wondering about the offensive recruits with the struggles that you guys have had on that side of the ball this year and kind of the unknown of, you know, staff and all of that going forward. What is your message to offensive recruits, especially guys that maybe are teetering with a couple weeks left before they make that decision? Well, again, and we've discussed that in here just in regards to you know, who we've been our, our first two years uh, here. We're a top 10 team, top five in several categories. We've been incredibly explosive. 
you know, we've been a very attractive offense for uh, skill, for offensive line development. Nobody's done it better than Coach Beatenbow. He's got an amazing track record at the very highest level, both in college and guys' uh, opportunity to go to the NFL and, and play and be prepared to play at a really high level. Uh, but again, between running backs and our skill guys and the quarterback uh, play, uh, it's been outstanding this year. And it hasn't represented our standard in any way, shape, or form. There's been incredible disappointment, and uh, you don't have a lot of excuses that are that are great for it. Uh, but I do think our our guys recognize the recruits recognize uh, that. Hey, man, that we've got several guys that. Um, haven't been out there uh, that would be very productive for us, uh, you know, from an injury standpoint. And it also, hey, man, what a great opportunity this is to go to a place like Oklahoma that's uh, got a top 10 defense, uh, got great special teams units. Now, if we can get it just a little bit better, get healthy on offense, I can come in and, and contribute because we're talking about a, a group of recruits that are very highly thought of, uh, highly sought after. These are guys that have a great opportunity to come in and help make us better. You know, we've, uh, we played 7,044 snaps of, of freshmen and sophomores uh, through uh, our first 10 games of the season. So, um, you know, we've, we've shown the, uh, the willingness to play young players, not only to play them, come in and, and be starters. And, and uh, we've had several guys that have been able to do that. Or when they've gotten in the game as true freshmen, they've come in and played really, really well, uh, whether that's defense or that's offense or that's in the kicking game. Uh, as well, so great opportunity is, is what I would say, and and uh, and believing in people, and this is a staff that's a championship staff, a staff that's had uh, success at the highest level for a long time, and so when you look at a body of work, um, there's more uh, uh, reasons to um, support their original decision decision uh, than not uh, in choosing Oklahoma, knowing that they're going to have a great future. Mm -hmm. Brent, um, you mentioned two weeks being kind of a long time. Well, what's that process been like to help kind of build Jackson's confidence back up so he can obviously take care of the football but still make quick, competent decisions, the stuff you need to have success against Alabama and LSU these last two weeks? I mean, I, I think it's going to be a, the same type of experience it's going to be for the rest of his career. And he's no different than any other player other than – He's the face, you know, that goes along with that position at a place like the University of Oklahoma. So that's a position that's a little bit kind of like the head coach position. That's, you know, there's a different type of microscope. There's a different type of uh, focus and, and that's okay. He's got broad shoulders to handle that, but uh, improving and developing, making mistakes, learning from the good and the bad, that's going to be an ongoing process for the rest of his career. And so it's just a, it's a daily task. And, uh, you know, he's got a, a huge part in that um, experience and the development and improving and taking ownership. You can't deflect it. You have to you have to have great awareness. You have to have great self-awareness. You have to have great humility. And then you have to have respect for what I need to do, his part, in order to improve. And then it's not just him. It's, it's everybody around him. A lot of times that position, uh, uh, you know, takes criticism even when it's not really his fault, if you will. And, uh, and then sometimes it, that position gets too much praise. That goes with that position. And uh, so, you know, my job is to make sure he has the right perspective in that regard. And then, again, making sure that, you know, we're uh, good around him and uh, in that position. But it's, it's, it's an everyday process that's uh, it's, it's relentless. Uh, it doesn't ever stop. And, uh, and that's a good thing. And, and, but I think it all starts with the things that I said, and, uh, and it's not him alone. And uh, it's, it's Coach Johns, it's Coach Finley. Uh, hell, it's, it's Coach Beatonbo and Coach Murray, you know, as much and Coach Jones, making sure that their guys are detailed and prepared and they understand the game plan so that it helps him have success and stay into a rhythm, uh, has a clean pocket, and helps him make good decisions. And so everybody has a, has a role in that. And... Um, confidence as a young player is always something. The confidence usually comes from the work. And, and then, uh, I'm not going to lie, you know, uh, it, the confidence takes a shot when you're not successful. And so we got to do, all, all of us together got to do a good job of hitting it head on. You know, what happened in the, in the middle of where you don't get the outcome that you want. And, and making sure that we identify it precisely, correctly, and, uh, and make sure that, uh, you know, everybody takes some level of ownership and then we move forward you know you, you go right back to work that's what it's all about yep 
Brent, when you were going in your opening statement, you talked about it, your defensive prowess, especially against the run. Well, that's what makes this game really interesting because their quarterback run game may be as powerful and strong as anybody in the country, and then they got that freshman outside with the speed and things. Talk about that matchup within the matchup that is going to be so intriguing in this game. Yeah, incredibly explosive, uh, and they have great playmakers everywhere. It, certainly it starts, everything goes through the quarterback. Um, but they have it at off, uh, offensive uh, uh, line play. They're really good up front. You know, they know what they're doing. They're making everything work. And uh, and then the running backs are fantastic. They got home run hitters, real strong physical running backs that uh, do a great job at running behind their pads. A massive O line that is really good at opening big gaps uh, for people. And then uh, fantastic explosive receivers and tight ends that. Uh, can get behind you, uh, and uh, they have tremendous catch radius. Just, you know, they can catch it in traffic, make something out of nothing, make competitive plays. Uh, so it's all a, a, a challenge. And uh, top 10 on offense and defense and scoring offense and scoring defense. They're playing great football right now. Uh, they've obliterated their last three opponents uh, and just run right through them. And uh, they lost two one-score games on the road. Uh, and they've beaten, I believe, five bowl eligible teams. They've beaten some really good teams, been in some really tough games and found ways to win and come up short in a couple games. But it's a team that's improved from where they were at the beginning of the year to where uh, they're at now. But man, we're, again, you're not going to look up you know, and win this game. Uh, you're gonna, it's about physicality. It's about execution. Certainly uh, the run game and the quarterback uh, uh, containing him, if you will. Uh, preventing him from having a, a career type day uh, is is you know paramount. And uh, but they've been really opportunistic. Uh, I think they've given it away 11 times. They've created 24 turnovers, maybe 15 in their last three games. So they're really starting to uh, play well within their systems and starting to play really aggressively. I know several players on their roster uh, that are familiar with through the recruiting process, both here at Oklahoma and, and prior to coming here to Oklahoma. I uh, had one of their middle linebacker, uh, number 11, and Jihad Campbell uh, was a guy that had committed at, at Clemson. And, uh, but they've got a really talented roster. They're getting uh, starting to play really, really well. Uh, and uh, we're going to have a great, great challenge. But, uh, you know, something that we've been really good at this year, to your point, something that they've really uh, been fantastic in. And so those, uh, those two things are, are going to meet, you know, on Saturday night. Look forward to it. Brent, seeing the senior day, I'm sure you have a story about every single one of them, but the five that have stuck with you from the start, Danny, Billy, Jaleel, Woody, Ethan, just what it's meant to you that they've been with you through the three years and what it's meant to the program. Yeah, man, they've just been fantastic. Uh, completely bought in. Uh, they've been the example when it comes to, to – uh, the work, the investment, uh, the love uh, for their opportunity and their teammates, the locker room. They've enriched it in every way. Uh, they've grown as men uh, in every way that you'd want them to as a, as a coach and as a parent. Uh, incredibly proud of, you know, uh, you know what their contributions you know from a football standpoint but what a great legacy all of them have left you know for this is what it looks like to pour into uh, the program and to make the most of their opportunity squeeze all the juice out of it uh, that you can and and then just uh, uh, be present in the moment you know they, they all have incredibly bright futures but uh, something I've been most proud of is they haven't gotten distracted you know through uh, the good and the bad they've they've been as consistent uh, of people uh, in this program, players in our program that you could ever want them to be. So I'm really, really thankful. I uh, love these guys like my own kids and proud of all of their accomplishments and know they're going to uh, go dominate, you know, when, when their careers here uh, are finished. Brent, uh, you mentioned in your opening statement about getting Jalil and, and Dion back against Missouri. Just wanted to ask you, how did you see them maybe handle or respond from a health standpoint, getting back on the field, and how do you approach maybe the, the last couple of weeks in terms of monitoring their workload and, and where they're at? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And uh, I said this as well last night. They uh, they certainly weren't you know, practicing for two weeks with us prior to going into to last week's game. So they had to knock knock off a little bit of rust and certainly their the volume, their capacity, their play capacity certainly wasn't uh, what it would normally be. And I thought they did great. You know, I thought they fought uh, their butts off to get back. 
uh, that was all them and their willingness to uh, push the envelope and uh, stress themselves to to get back out with their teammates and be a part of what we're trying to do and so really proud of them and the, the toughness that they showed and the leadership that they showed as well uh, through it all and I thought that they did a good job and uh, the second half they uh, started losing a little bit from a stamina standpoint and uh, so we limited uh, particularly limited Jalil uh, in his play count and uh, you know well that we we're hoping that would continue to improve you know as we uh, you know move forward but uh, thought that they uh, they brought a lot um, of excitement with the rest of the guys too you know having them back out there that has a real effect uh, that you can just uh, tell there's a different type of buzz mm -hmm. Brent, I know, I know the offensive line has had its struggles this season, but these last few weeks, how encouraging has it been to see the development of uh, Heath Ozida and Logan Allen on the left side? And does that maybe signal that things can turn around quicker up front, you know, heading into next year and moving forward? Yeah, again, we have, I think, Tarquin and um, uh, we got uh, Tar Tarquin and Spencer Brown and, uh, and Branson. Those are the three guys that. Uh, won't be back as uh, seniors, and then everybody else is back. And uh, so uh, watching these guys develop and improve in incremental ways uh, through their opportunities, those guys that you mentioned, uh, again, man, I've, I've loved the, the fight of those guys and their, uh, the work that they've put in and uh, the improvement that has, uh, that's really happened. And knowing that, man, all their best football is still ahead. They're still going to continue to develop and improve. And uh, maybe it's even a guy like Fabecci, where he was at the beginning of the year to where he is uh, now, or getting Troy back. I believe that Texas week was when we first got Troy back and his leadership. And, and again, he's a guy that was out for six months. And so he also has developed and gotten better uh, here the last uh, several uh, weeks. And then along with, again, a guy like Isaiah Autry, uh, you know, um, Eddie Pierre-Louis, uh, has also uh, gotten some some reps in there along with uh, Daniel against uh, UK Dan against uh, Maine in particular, but gave gave us just a uh, a glimpse of you know what the what the future looks like, and we still got other guys, um, you know Josh Sosa, uh, BJ, uh, guys that um, you haven't seen yet uh, that you know we really feel great about, along with you know several mid year guys that are going to come in here and make us better day one uh, as well, so. Um, that's a group that we're incredibly excited about. And even uh, though we fell short this year, uh, it's a group that has improved. And, uh, and several guys, again, were put in a position where their opportunity came maybe a little bit before, uh, you know, uh, they had, quote, unquote, earned it. But, you know, I thought that they did a great job with the opportunity that they were given. Brent, you talked about your five seniors. I'm wondering about Woody in particular. It seems like this day and age, college football, really rare for someone to stay at one school for you know five six years just how much has his the endurance of his investment meant to you yeah he's just as, as loyal as they, co they come and uh, uh, he cares deeply about this place and his opportunity his teammates uh, we don't have a better leader a guy that pours into his teammates more than Woody and uh, great humility Coach, I'll, I'll play wherever you want me to play. And he, he's been a guy that's plugged in a lot of different spots for us, has always been ready, uh, great competitor, great example for the younger players of what uh, leading looks like. And, uh, and again, to me, great leaders are ones that can reproduce it. And that's what he's intentionally tried to do and has done. Uh, he's, he's brought the best out of the, the young players around him and his teammates, been a great, great uh, example for others. Coach, back to the offensive coordinator uh, situation. There's been a lot of talk about Dan Mullen. Is the job Dan Mullen's if he wants it? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to uh, comment about uh, you know the uh, details of the search. Um, I reached out to him a year ago. Um, so. Uh, okay. Uh, emotionally, it, it'd be easy this time of year. You see teams that just get emotionally down. Your guys have have reason to if anyone does how do you see them going into a big game like this just emotionally as a club well again uh nobody is uh, listen the fans should be disappointed <laughs> but i can promise you these players and the coaching staff are incredibly disappointed uh, but that doesn't mean that our spirit's broken 
And that's what I've seen, uh, a strong, strong spirited team that's invested too much. You don't just give in here, you know, in the 11th hour. Man, this is a group of guys that still believes I've got to do a good job of showing them, again, where, where's the improvement been? What is holding us back? Is it that y'all stink and your coaches are terrible and we should get rid of everybody and tear the whole place down? Uh, you know, uh, like probably some people think, and I don't you know, the opinions are what the opinions are, but my job is to is to recognize where you know where there has been improvement. You know where we had our opportunities to win, and what the game again, winning doesn't negotiate. Okay, and uh, when you don't do the things that winning requires, you you lose. And so, um, if we can get just a little bit better in in a couple of uh, spaces, then uh, we'll get a better result. And so, uh, I think that our guys are a group of guys that. Um, the buy-in's too strong, uh, the leadership's too strong, uh, the investment's been too strong, and they've come too far uh, to, uh, you know, I think they know that they, they can be a great example for what fight and uh, what belief and what finishing and and what uh, improving and proving people wrong, what it looks like. And I think this is a group of guys that are committed to doing that. Yeah, Brent, um, given current events, uh, I wanted to ask you, you once had a policy about um, recruits. If, if you're committed to Oklahoma, then, you know, you're not going to go visit somewhere else. And I just wonder how that policy has kind of evolved as NIL has taken the kind of center stage with some of these kids. If you're, it- if you're visiting other schools in, in, the, in the present moment, you're not committed. That's what I would say. They're offer pulled? Uh, is that part of my policy? I'm asking, has oh, you're asking. My, my, I never said that. Has your policy changed at all in recent years? Mm-mm. No. 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 Okay. Uh, so, Coach, you've obviously faced Alabama a few times over the years, but that was with Nick Saban as the head coach. Uh, now you've got Kalen DeBoer from the outside looking in. What do you see as... DeBoer's imprint on the team, things that he's done maybe a little differently that stand out. Yeah, obviously the DNA uh, is is different, what they're doing uh, in all three phases, offense, defense, and their special teams. Uh, successful a different type of way in some ways, and in some ways it's similar. You know, I think uh, one of Kellen's uh, strengths as a football coach, a very successful coach, is he takes a group of players that he has, and he figures, and their staff, they figure out what they can do, and and then uh, you know they major in that, you know, put them in position to be successful based on the player's strengths. So they've done a nice job of doing that uh, throughout the course of the season, and uh, but they look like Alabama uh, of old uh, in regards to uh, the lines of scrimmage and the skill and the quarterback play, uh, what they're doing on defense, their aggressiveness, forcing turnovers, those types of things. So some ways different, some ways not. All right. Appreciate it. Have a good day.